Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com, joined by my co-host Steve Chambers, also with Wikibon. Uh, joined for this segment by Mike Kozlowski, VP of IT for Old Republic National Tile. Mike, so, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure to be here. Great awesome. Time. So, uh, you know, theCUBE, we always love, uh, you know, being able to really get into kind of the, the, the mini case studies, uh, talk about, you know, what practitioners are actually doing. Uh, on the Wikibon side, we actually founded the company on allowing IT practitioners to share with their peers. So. You know, we just pretend we're you know sitting at the bar after we've deployed <laughs> you know some solution, and you so know, let's vent a little bit about what's going on. So first of all, before we get into the technology, tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, I know, you know you're located in the Twin Cities, yep. but uh, tell us a little bit about the, the, the organization and your role there. All right. Well, Old Republic National Title is a title and escrow insurance company. We operate in pretty much all 50 states, and, and, um, and that's it. We are not an international organization. Uh, just about a two billion dollar revenue on annual sales. Um, if you closed on a house or purchased a house, you probably had our paperwork. Hopefully, you had your our paperwork sitting in front of you <laughs> here in the, twin, uh, in the United States. Um, we're our corporate uh, headquarters is in Tampa now, okay. uh, but our data centers are in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Roseville, California. Yeah, um, we service about uh, 250 remote sites throughout the country. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I have to imagine your industry is, has a lot of kind of the mergers and acquisitions, you know, various companies coming together. Um, you know, is that something that, you know, you've had to tackle, uh, you know, in your time there? Well, we really, um, there's been a lot of, uh, I guess, divestiture of some of the title uh, industry. Um, some of the smaller, maybe less uh, financially fluid organizations haven't, haven't been able to see, uh, get past the downturn of the, the real estate markets. Uh, we've absorbed some of that, um, but uh, our organization is uh, pretty fiscally conservative. Uh, there's a reason there's title hold, um, and uh, you know, we've, we maintain a real solid uh, portfolio to, to support our claims that come through. So, so Mike, uh, you're VP of IT, uh, yeah. how big a staff do you manage, and what, what, uh, what skill sets, what roles do, do you really own? My staff, I've got about 20. Uh, on my staff direct reports, we manage, monitor, and maintain the entire infrastructure. That includes the data center uh, with the uh, floor space, the heating and cooling, uh, we the server farm, the storage arrays, parts of the network uh, infrastructure. Um, we also support the Citrix farm. And um, one application that I consider the most important of any organization, that's, that's your email. <laughs> so if your email goes down and you're an older public, I'm responsible for it. All right, so, so wow, you, you host all your stuff, even even the email still. Uh, yeah. Are you using Exchange or? Use Exchange and we use uh, Source One as our archiving tool. All right, I, I have to ask, has Microsoft been telling you to move to Office 365? Uh, they're talking to us a little bit, right? But uh, it's one thing to go there, it's another thing to bring it back if you need to. Mm, so. That's true. And um, the kind of business you're in sounds like you know, people depend on you, don't they? And, you know, I would imagine that, you know, if, if you're going to insure their house and their property, they're going to depend on you. And I'm thinking you must be working in some pretty tough kind of regulatory kind of environment. Or you mentioned uh, the word. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it sounds like a quite a risk-averse business. Does is that reflect itself in the IT? Is it protection above everything else? It or? does. Yeah, yeah uh, we take security and uh, compliance is very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a saying. You know, I, my team is responsible for the capacity, the reliability of the environment, the availability, the performance, and the security of it. Right. You put those words together, you'll figure out what an acronym is. And I just won't <laughs> say it here on TV, so. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're not regulated by the FCC, exactly. but uh, well, we appreciate you taking so, that. Up. But uh, it's something you can remember, um, and that's what I like to do. Um, but yeah, we're, we're heavily regulated internally. Um, from, a, from a banking industry, our partners regulate us very well. Uh, we're audited. 50 to 60 times a year by our oh, different partners. Really? Wow. Um, you know, assessments come through on a regular basis that we have to address. So what's your, what's your attitude to, you know, we, we had a DevOps day yesterday here at EMC World, uh, and it was all about innovation and speed of change and agility. How do you balance that with that kind of risk of, you know, 
risk management approach. You have to have smart people on your team. Yeah. You know, to be able to have the, the flexibility and the maneuverability to get to where you need to yeah. in the time frame. It's not, and when I mention your team, not just the people you hire that's working directly for you, but your partners that you, you engage with outside. So, so Mike, uh, one of the things we want to focus on in this interview is the data protection side of the house. Can you mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about, I mean, obviously, you know, it's a risk averse, need to make sure, you know, your data is maintained. Well, so talk to us about the, the role of data protection in your IT shop. Right now, we've got, uh, basically, we'll, we'll cover upwards of five to six different copies of the same data, um, either through our backups and replication technologies or just through different um, um, copies and and oh, I'm, I'm losing, losing track of the word, the snapshots, thank you, um, of the data. Um, it's important that that data is available immediately. As you said, you know, the normal family, everyday American family relies on us heavily when they're buying a house. Uh, it's a stressful opportunity for everybody. Uh, you want to make sure the paperwork and more importantly, the checks are available. So we cut a lot of checks, we cut a lot of paperwork. Um, and we have to have that data accurate and it's gotta be secured. So it's encrypted, um, and it's behind locked doors and locked firewalls. Okay, can you talk to us about your relationship with EMC and how they're helping you with your data protection challenges? Well, it's interesting. Uh, when I started at, uh, at ORT about uh, almost seven years ago now, uh, we were running different backup systems for our two regions. We have a western region out of Roseville, California, and national out of Minneapolis. We were running different backup strategies, different replication. We basically didn't replicate things. It was back up and then copied over. EMC came in and started talking to us about Avmar, Data Domain, Recover Point. And we, we implemented that about four or five years ago now. Um, it's taken a lot of worries off my head, I'll be honest with you. Um, I used to worry about things at night if I could restore them, because it doesn't do any good to back something up if you can't restore it. Yeah, as they say in the industry, uh, you know, ba backup, uh, you know, is needed, but restores everything, exactly. right? Exactly. So. So. <laughs> um, but then we needed uh, to turn our DR around at a little quicker pace. We had a 12-hour turnaround time. We've got that down to probably, we can bring up the infrastructure in less than an hour yeah. right now, yeah. fully, if we have a hole in the ground at one of our data centers. And that's all due to uh, the recover point appliances that we put in our ability to replicate it and also make sure it's backed up and it's safe and secured. That's what the EMC has done for us. Is it complicated? You know, is it a complicated architecture? Yeah. Well, I'm probably the wrong guy to talk to because I can't really explain it. So yeah, to okay. me, it's a little, it is complicated, <laughs> but uh, that's why I hire smart people around me. Um, it's complicated in, in the fact that it's not what I consider fully automated yet. I still have to rely on human intervention to make sure the backups occur, that they're repli you know, yeah. they're storable, the rep uh, replications occur, that I can actually bring those systems up in relatively short order. Sooner or later, we're going to have to have that all replicated. And you know, who knows? Maybe run it uh, high availability, full talent, across multiple. I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about now. I think with uh, Vplex is uh, yeah. we're talking with our, our folks now back in the cities. All right, so it sounds like you're, you're touching a lot of the pieces of the, the portfolio that EMC has in their data protection group. Uh, can, can you maybe just paint a little bit of a picture for us as to you know what you use and how those various pieces fit? Well, right now we use Evermar and Data Domain primarily as our backup. So we, we, we back them up at our, at our two data centers and then we, we basically replicate those off to the, uh, the Arcolo facility. Um, Recover Point, we rep replicate dynamically all our critical systems and basically all of our virtual systems. So we're running about 73% of our, all of our systems are virtualized right now. Uh, so they're getting replicated dynamically. Um, we have a little problem with our Isilon backup, it's taken too long. Uh, need EMC to kind of step up to the plate. So, And it's it, that's where it's a little complicated. We have, in the real estate industry, you have a lot of small files that are associated with a re real estate transaction. Pictures of, of a land or building, you know, the paperwork, the title itself, all of that is in basically millions of directories and there's small files and millions of directories. It's tough to back it up. Yeah. Uh, we've got to figure out a way to get that down from a, right now it's taking us three days to back it up down to a 12 hour to eight hour window. Yeah, I, I mean, Mike, one of the questions we've had is, you know, should the backup window be killed? I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it gets tougher and tougher uh, to be able to handle that, you know, uh, data's growing so fast, you know, you, how do you still manage with a backup window, I guess? Well, if you kind of, what my thought is, maybe I'm unique in this, is that if I can get a, 
uh, high availability fault tolerant architecture in place where I can run uh, the application from multiple lo different diverse locations, yeah. really regardless of where the, the user is at, located at. Yeah. Um, I don't need a I don't need yeah. to worry about disaster recovery. You know, it's going to be available. The data is going to be the same regardless of, of where it's at. Sure. That's kind of the vision that I think I'm going to take the, the organization. That's great. I mean, you know, we, we had a customer on here earlier be, uh, from Australia and they were talking about that exact architecture and just like the peace of mind. Uh, you know, clearly that's something we all want, right? We're well, <laughs> sleep yeah. at night but when we've got people relying on us. Um, so definitely possible. That, that sounds great. Uh, do, do, you, do your guys cover operations as well? Architecture. How, how does how does that split in your uh, team? I'm sorry, operations. You know, for mm -hmm. operating the infrastructure, uh, is that under your team as well? It's all one. It's all it's one all, team. It's all one so, team. That was yeah, what I was getting. My there. team is uh, constructed. I, it's. Uh, I have an operations group, which is my more junior team. Yeah. And then I have an architecture team. So you don't have like my, silos of. Technology. I don't people. like the word silos. I like right. the word tornado better. It's, tornado. It's, you know, uh, okay. Chad Tackett from EMC calls them cylinders of excellence. Of exactly. course. Well, yeah. <laughs> Chad and I had a conversation a couple weeks ago about that. I explained the tornado to him. It's, tornado. Yeah. The concept is, is you start small and gathering the data yeah. or the information across these different disciplines. And as you gain that, you gain strength and momentum. And all of a sudden, that tornado is right. capturing more and more, yeah. more and more information, more and more data, more and more um, in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, integration. Right. So that you can operate yeah. it more efficiently and more effectively. But, but the tornado doesn't get out of control. Oh no, that's my job. I got to control the tornado. <laughs> and because they do say that, um, you know, the structure of your team tends to be reflected in the way you, you, you know, you buy and deploy equipment. You know, and it sounds like you want to go. You want things to be simpler and easier, right? You know, maybe the architecture might be more complex, but you want that always available. You know, you want to get rid of backup windows. You know, if you can. So can you envisage your team changing as that gets more simpler, or have you always got more problems to solve? You know, I think our industries, we're always going to have new and interesting yeah. problems to solve. Uh, we're, have to get, we're going to have to get better. Yeah. We're going to have to understand the businesses that we're supporting better. Yeah. Um, we have to be more aware of the end user's experience. Yeah. I mean, people every day you know, work on a PC, but they're not experts in it, and they expect utility-like delivery. Yeah, and that's what we have to do, provide. So, 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 Mike, you know, EMC's got a really diverse portfolio. You know, do they make it simple for you to be able to choose? You know, how, how do you manage with that kind of consultative, uh, you know, solution? Um, I wouldn't say it's simple. Um, it's more of an educational opportunity across the board. Um, they learn about us and, and me in particular, and I learn about the technologies and, and the culture of EMC. Yeah. Um, you know, both of those play a part, not only the technologies that EMC provides, but the culture of the organization, how it, how it interoperates with each other. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. They're not saying, uh, we have a hammer, here's a hammer, use a hammer. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're saying, you know, you get to know your business, that's what you want with the kind of consultative partnership. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, that they could have. Yeah. So, and I probably said too much already, but I can't speak highly enough about the guys that I work with. Yeah. So. Yeah. I trust them implicitly with my professional life. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, one of the interesting themes from yesterday, from the uh, EMC uh, DevOps Day, EMC Code Day, was um, was this concept from from companies like Puppet Labs to, to give technical people freedom um, to experiment. I don't know if that applies across the board, though. Or do, do you think that's more of a startup thing more than a traditional business? Mm. Or where, where do you? I hope it's that? not. I you know I. I my background is a, as a network architect and engineer. Right. I got into management because somebody wanted to, told me that I should take control of something. Right. Believe me, managers don't control anything. It's the staff and the people <laughs> that do the work that actually do it. Um, what I try to do is empower my staff to be creative. Yep. Um, I need them to be creative. I need them to think out of the box. I need them to think outside of the EMC envelope and yep. how does it integrate with the other technologies that we deploy. You know, Citrix is a major piece of our environment, and how does it work together there? You know, you, I know your relationship with VMware is very, very tight. It's very tight with us. Uh, yeah. We've got a vBlock deployed. My boss likes to say, we've got almost everything EMC provides. Well, yeah. we don't have quite at all, all of it yet. But uh, you know, I need my, my team, and I need myself to be challenged and, and think outside the box. Yeah. So, so Mike, you know, the, the simplicity's come up a bunch, you know? What, what could EMC or the industry as a whole do to make your job easier? Have people stop calling my boss. 
I mean, that's the message. It's I've got to I've got to build an architecture and infrastructure where people rely on it like they're turning the water on in their house and their electricity in their home. That's it. That's what we have to do. IT is a utility. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And you know, we we can no longer afford outages of any kind. We can't afford maintenance windows. We can't afford. Um, not having the data available for the people when they need it, wherever they need it. And when you say can't afford it, I, I think you, you've touched on two or three reasons why that is. I think you know, to start with, it was the, you know, we don't want to let people down kind of attitude, right? which, which, is, which is great. But, you know, when you think can't afford it, you, what other reasons would there be? You know, what would be the consequences of you losing data? Um, or does that not matter? The consequences of losing data? <laughs> I just did not get into that. It's, um, for instance, you have a home, yeah. and it's the title is in your name, mm -hmm. and we ensure that it's that title is your. But all yeah. of a sudden, we lose that data, yeah. and somebody comes and says, "No, I own that piece of property," yeah. and they've got a piece of paper that says that. Right. Yeah, we got a long, <laughs> lengthy legal battle right in front of us right yeah. now. But if you're insured through us or any others, I mean, we're there to back you up. Yeah. If we lose that, we can't back you up. Yeah. And I understand that from a business perspective. I have to maintain that data. Let's see another question. You, you mentioned you've got like a younger team doing operations. You know, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things we're hearing a lot, and it was in the keynote today, talking about your father's uh, VMAX, you know, how technology is changing really quickly. And I, I wonder if, uh, you know, some of the, some of the, the, the staff on your team if, have they had a better experience of technology outside of work, you know, as a consumer, you know, with their iPhone and everything, or, you know, is, is the stuff they're working on cutting edge, or, you know, what's their attitude, what, what do they say? When I talk about more junior, I talk about less, okay. not the years of experience, okay. and not just in the technologies, but in the business world as well. Okay, right. Because yeah. you've got to integrate the two. You've got to understand what business you're supporting right, in order to really develop the right architectural solutions. As, as you mature in that area, and I'm, I'm not talking about age, I'm talking about right. you know your ability to understand Good the point. business and the technologies, you'll, you'll be able to develop those more and more. Right. Now, I am a staunch believer that most of us in the professions that we've chosen mm -hmm. are dealing with the, the Twitters, the, yeah. um, the uh, Facebooks, the, all of the social media, all of the newfangled technologies, which, by the way, drive me completely insane. Um, just because everybody's an expert at them, but yeah. that's okay. Um, you have to be on top of it. You have to stay with it. And for the most part, we chose this profession because we like that sort of thing, so we're going to be in there. Yeah. We're going to be in the forefront of that. Yeah. My guys are always telling me to get new phones for them about every other day. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. so, Mike, I want to give you the last word. You know, if, if you've done the, kind of your backup environment and all these data protection solutions from EMC, you know, what, what lessons learned do you have that you would want to share with, with peers? Uh, don't underestimate it. Don't oversell it. Um, we we in the IT profession is uh, tend to overcommit and underdeliver. Right. And uh, I uh, I step back when uh, when I see things happening. Uh, or people say things. One of the things that drives me completely insane as well is somebody telling me or my business that I can turn up a VM in five minutes. Technically I can, but practically there's no way. You can't apply what you need to, to the environments to make it work and integrate with the other things in that five minutes. So that, you know, those are the things Mike, you better watch out. Steve's going to get you on containers soon. We can spin it up in five seconds. <laughs> no, so, right. Google, Again, Google does billions of them a week. The lesson learned is step back, make sure you know where yeah. your direction you're going, and go for it. Yeah. You know, don't change midstream. Go for it. Keep your yeah. direction. Fair point. All right. Well, Mike Kozlowski, really appreciate you coming to share your story uh, from the Twin Cities here. Uh, you know, last thing, uh, you know, since you've been to EMC World before? I have. Okay, so you know, what, you know, what, what brings you back to EMC World? What are you excited about this week? What, 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 you know, what, why somebody like you come to this event? Um, actually, just to find out what else is going on in the industry. I mean, I, I get a lot of visitors and, and a lot of propaganda, not only from EMC, but others. And 
you know, I got to stay on, in tune with it and see what else is going on. Yeah. You kind of hear side conversations from other people, too. Good shit. Yeah. So. All right. Well, yeah, always the hallway conversations are some of the best reasons to come to the event in exactly. person. I appreciate you sharing some of your frank comments uh, about what you're doing with data protection, with EMC as a partner overall uh, in your industry. So uh, this is Stu Miniman with Steve Chambers. Uh, you know, wall-to-wall -wall coverage here from EMC World 2015, and we'll be right back after this quick break.